Hello everyone, as you can see today, I will be doing in fact one of the least topics anyone would want to do. I will be talking about dimensional theory and this video would cover up the brief concepts of time, space, energy and matter independently and codependently to each other. It will also go over the mathematical dimensions and the non-mathematical dimensions to quantify for a plane of existence. It will also talk about attack potency and destructive capacity and how they logically quantify a certain character's tier. Without further ado, let's start. What is space, time, energy and matter? So for these, I have um, basically two definitions in which would help depending on anybody's comprehension skills. The first is space. Space, this is the basic fundamental that governs all of existence and this isn't anything hard to comprehend. Every living thing and non-living thing, despite the complexity, need a, needs a space of its kind to linger around. The second definition basically is that space, this is a void or this is an empty void across all things in existence within the physical world governed by laws of physics in relation with other, with other laws interrelated with and to it. This basically can be filled with nothingness or something. Next on the list is time. Personally, I find this as the most complex, but at the same time, the most simple. Time is the fundamental of events, basically in which, unlike space, has no fit de set def dimensionality, because time flows across every form of space already being so high that nothing really is above it, and you will understand as I go on. The next definition is that time and space are so interrelated that without time, no other form of reality would exist in the physical world because time is the beginning and end. No matter what, time exists in every subatomic reality existing frame. Time also varies based on spirituality and dimensional analysis. Time can be manipulated to an extent because no matter the dimension, time is the same across all things but functions sequentially but will never stop existing. All existence across planes of limited states, all things started with limit all things started with time, immediately the slightest thing showed up and will stop when everything with that frame ends. Next up is energy. Now it is really funny how everyone forgets about this alongside matter. But either ways, energy as we know can be created nor destroyed, but transferred from one point to another, or form to another. Now, there are several forms, types, and categorizations of this. But energy as a fundamental source of existence naturally exists within existence as space and time need energy to exist because space, VOM, and superstring theory. And even despite that, anyone who is smart enough to sit down, understand the concepts of space and time would understand energy. Now, the second definition for this is that energy is a force of any kind which exists within the concepts of space and time which also governs its existence no matter how small it is or big, which exists in different places of reality from human universe to hyperverse. Energy affects coverage of space but isn't just coverage but expansion and contraction rate of space that gets affected. In summary, energy is a total endowment of all sorts. Other forms of reality can't exist without energy. Next up we have matter. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space, and anything animate or inanimate that can occupy space would have a space in time as well as energy to encompass such space. The next definition for matter is that this is, is mass and volume across space are also known as density. The cardinal rule of general relativity is that matter tells space how to curve, while curved space tells matter how to move. In conclusion, the first thing here is that space, time, and matter can't exist without energy, and vice versa, except energy. The second is that space and time can exist without matter. The third is that matter can't exist without space, time, and energy. And fourth is that space can't exist without time, and vice versa. Now all the important stuff has been passed and touched on, let's move on. Now for the existential dimensions and how they stack from the 0 to the 12th dimension, it isn't hard as long as you comprehended all I just said. Now the 0th dimension is basically a point in which there aren't any spatial constructs to quantify further. The first dimension is length, which in physics, while during the study of motion, distance is the movement from two points straight or linear to each other, which is from point A to point B. 
Now, even multilinear straight lines all converging to have a closer center like a flat drawing of a star, but this time with a straw-like figure. Well, that's still a one-dimensional construct. Basically, movement is only singularly linear from one point to another, meaning no diagonal movements. The second dimension is length plus width or breadth. Just like a square in which there are multilinear movements or diagonal within a finite or infinite space, but everything here is flat. The third dimension is length plus width plus height. This is just like the second dimension, but with height of any extent, whether finite or infinite. Now, the fourth dimension isn't just time, but linear time and the three spatial dimensions. And what do I mean by this? Time consists of three main parts, which is past, present, and future, in which linear time would mean an aspect of these, but not that per se. But the ability to either pause, accelerate, slow, or a reverse in it, but just one of these is enough, despite be it past, present, or future. Take note of this because of the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension, this actually has to do with multiple three-dimensional constructs alongside that same linear time. And what do I mean? Be it country, city, planet, building, or multiverse, it really doesn't matter. This is just being able to perceive more than one 3D construct alongside being able to manipulate the singularity of time within a general embodiment governed by the same spatial laws of physics. I'm sure most of you are, you are wondering that how does this include country or city level threats or even building? At least, planet is most relatable. The thing is that for city and country threats, simply if they can affect multitudes of countries or cities or even building threats, if they perceive multitudes of isolated size 3D constructs and manipulate the time singularity of them, as long as they are governed by the same physical laws, then it is good and they are isolated within a space-time, then they quantify for this. The sixth dimension. This actually is just that of the fifth dimension, but unlike the fifth, where it is governed by the same physics, this is an isolated plane with different laws of physics, but within an isolated plane in which an, any AP chair can exist within, or DC chair, which is the same for every other dimension in the context of AP and DC. The seventh dimension, this actually is the sixth and the fourth dimension, but this time on a multilinear scale, and what do I mean? The sixth is, is isolation plus different laws, but instead of controlling a singularity of time out of the four ways to do so, this time you basically have two ways of controlling it. This is simply because a continuum with several laws won't follow the onward linear time flow spectrum, but two of those four depending on the kind of seventh dimension. And when I s place two, it is clearly coming from the context of not having same energetic and matter laws of coinciding with each other along with space and time. So since all on one or one way or the other need each other to exist, then you need equivalent of time singularities to balance those two to keep things in balance. The eighth dimension this is basically the seventh and the fourth, which nothing much changes but the fact that the eighth dimension is the plane above the seventh. But this time, within three aspects of that time out of the four, but perceive either present and future or present and past. Because it is above something that has several laws plus two aspects out of the temporal to balance it, which is several actions and realities of different uncertainties. Now the eighth dimension would have to view it in any aspects it may drift from either past plus present or future plus present and govern three out of four ways to manipulate it. The ninth dimension, this is basically the eighth and the fourth dimension. This is above something that can perceive past plus present or future plus present alongside controlling three aspects of time out of four. These beings basically view the same past plus present or future plus present, but they have full control over the four aspects of time in order to also keep the lower tiers where it should be. Now the third dimension, this is basically the ninth dimension, but in here nothing is remotely normal in the sense that any form of order becomes disorder. For example, humans play the role of dogs, chairs going to work, zombies being superheroes. Where does that happen?
the third dimension. The eleventh dimension, this is basically past plus present plus future, plus full control over time, in which every reality becomes singular. The twelfth dimension, this is basically the eleventh dimension plus the fifth dimension. Control over all but isolates every dimension within it. And these beings are also known as high hyperversal beings, which now let's go to the part that causes the incoherency, incredulity, misconceptions and preconceptions within the community. But before I go to that, let me clear up some things. The first thing I want to clear up is that each dimension does really have its plane. These are mainly powers of proof for sets existential quantifications. From the first dimension to the twelfth dimensional beings can exist within the same universe, but we'll see each other differently. But each dimension still does have their realm of existence, which is a lower tier, which a lower tier can't enter without special amps. And aside that, would won't perceive the full thing but just the dimensional construct of itself would reflect on the higher being. Basically what I mean by that is that a six dimensional being talking to a five dimensional being, the five dimensional being will only see the five dimensional part of a six dimensional being. Now, the second thing is that for the case of 5D to, and 12D where isolation is stated, it's just mostly occurs like that as 5D is referenced to anything in parallel universe like, but this is only when they are outside the lower dimension or within there as they can do such or even when in the same universe uh, as other tiers they can just easily isolate a 4d being a 3d being 2d being 1d being with a small 5d constructs like an orb or bubble like a physical being size the universe and when i also mentioned the city and building a b thing of such beings well with that with that and all that I have said, you should be able to comprehend it. And also, a higher being can create his or her tier's existential universe around the same universe as others are in, like a pocket universe, and others can do the same, in which a 12D being will perceive them all, as well as an 11D being. Now to the problems, which is versus battle wiki. Now, Versus Battle Wiki does a good job in explaining things and having credible general calcs for each supposed tier. This existential tiering list is just pointing, is just point. Now, this existential tiering list I just pointed out and made is done by a lot of research and understanding which holds credibility inductively, abductively, and deductively, no matter the context, be it any form of fiction or even reality. This is the Versus Battle Wiki tiering system as you can see on the screen. They go from as little as below human strength to boundless. Now the problem is that they try setting tiers of AP and DC equivalent to tiers of existence, which is a false equivalence. And that's why from the Universal Plus section, personally via my interaction with 9,000 or 2,000 of members in the community, that's where people get confused. The thing is that from as low as atomic level to multiversal actually fits in every plane of existence at least from the third dimension in terms of power. Who says a three-dimensional being can't be multiversal? Where does that come from? From my explanation, it is easy to deduce 4D beings can rule over 3D multiverse like the same occurrence like the others. And same goes for an 11D being not being a... Not, um, uh, same goes for an 11D being, being a human or a planet buster. And there isn't really anything like universal plus in terms of existence to quantify someone for 4D. That's highly illogical and holds no real validation behind said jurisdictions. Universal plus is basically someone that can destroy more than a universe, but not two or more. High universal is also illogical because this is classified as infinite three-dimensional in, in which high uni should just be a larger finite universe size than the um, normal 100 billion light years everybody knows. Now low complex, complex, high complex multiversal is also very logical as people never know how this suits as 6D, 7D and 8D in their tiering system which holds no validation.
But apart from the from that hyperversal, high hyperversal, baseline autoversal, autoversal, high autoversal, or uh, are well accurate and done. I feel what they fail to do is actually logically quantify these things by separating good tiers from bad ones and good ones from existential planes. And also, I will introduce a few more tiers and why they hold up, but that will be on my Instagram. So do to check it out. But before I go on, some people may be wondering, but what are the string and M theory dimensional mathematical tiers and high and high hyperversal tiers? String and M theory are basically descriptions of how space works in complexities of vibrating quantum particles smaller than atoms. Now, these theories help in the existential parts because it is basically space just like 0 to 3D. And if anyone was observant enough, you would notice each tier is just a more complex three-dimensional space with more time attributes broken down from an infinite singularity to different planes. So basically, mathematical 4D is two cubes, which is a tesseract. Well, just keep adding extra cubes to that tesseract to that of the 12th dimension. For example, the 5 dimension equals 4D plus 2 cubes, which is 2 3D structures, or in other words, 4 cubes and onward, while the remaining dimension is time, which makes sense now to the existential claims, which holds solid credibility and validity as of now. I also want to let everyone on this street that a lot really don't know. I hear infinite this and infinite that of the previous dimension which isn't wrong, but no one knows how to even quantify them. I mean, they don't even know existential tiers of mathematical tiers as well as how they are independent and codependent. But infinite of every tier is just really infinite of every tier I gave existentially. But mathematically, there are actually 24 dimensions or still the other way around which is existential aspects is still 24 dimensions. How do you know this? Simply, you know 5... D mathematical is 4D plus 2 cubes of 3D, which is 5D or in short 4 cubes with one more complexity as time, which I explained. That time holds as the tier number in between depending on the manipulation set. Yes, basically, zero dimension is, is zero dimension, but one dimension is points. Infinite 1D is infinite points. 2D equals line. Infinite 2D is infinite lines. 3D is square. Infinite 3D equals infinite squares. 4D equals cube. Infinite 4D equals infinite cubes. 5D equals 4D plus time. Infinite 5D equals infinite 4D plus finite time which occurs in singularities as you go up, like I explained earlier. So this is how actually the infinite parts of things work. So that's why there are either 24 dimensions or 12, and within the 12 there are infinite sets, and this is how the infinite sets actually work. I will stop here before it gets too complex. And finally, the best way to understand this is actually by reading a bit of quantum physics. Actually, reading Marvel in DC is actually very important because it actually helps a lot in my understanding and me seeking more knowledge on this because the writers are so knowledgeable and not normal that you can literally learn from there and also think for yourself as well to be able to understand this thing as well as interact with other people and talk about this. So get the remaining tiers, well, click the, click the links in the description, join my Discord, follow my Instagram, Twitter, and my Facebook to get me, to get, to get me anywhere there. And please also like, share, and subscribe. I put a lot of work into this. Please share, like, and subscribe. Yes, I'm literally begging you. Share, share, share. And... To be honest, I think this video needs to go viral to cure people from their ignorance and incredulity. Next video drops Wednesday. If you like MHA or in other words, My Hero Academia, play, please then look forward to it. See you next time. Peace.